chain of processes. Have you ever heard those words about GIS or not at all? No? Okay. Just to do a bit a uh, resume of what we did as uh, the first class. This is all the manipulations and all the treatments we talk about during the classes, okay? If you remember, we talk about the selection request, special attribute request. Um, the calculation of new data with the field calculator. We talk about also how to join information, for example, from an Excel document to your layers, in QGIS. Uh, also the spa special job too. And after, it's what we did last week, so maybe there were some people who were not here. Uh, I will give you the PowerPoint on the Slack uh, for last class. So, everything here is what we call a manipulation or treatment. Okay. Since like today, I gave you a document and I told you to do, for example, a request or to do a buffer, some things like that. So you just had the information and you just had you to click on the button and just to follow the rules I gave you. Okay. The thing is, using QGIS doesn't work like that most of the time. Most of the time you have a question and you have to do by your own all the manipulation, okay? And this is what we call a chain of process. So we have the word in Japanese. So a chain of process is all the steps you have to do to obtain a result, okay? For example, last week uh, we talked about the power outage area, okay? And I told you to get the power outage area, you have to do that and that and that and that. All those steps is what we call a chain of processes, okay? Taijo desu ka? Okay. So, until today, you only had to do what we call in France, button click, you have just to go there and click here and do what I told you to say. To do. But today I will help you with the methodology to create by your own a chain of processes. Okay? And by the way, as I write it here, you have a tool in QGIS where you can create the chain of processes, okay? And you just have to run it and the um, the software will do all the manipulation by itself. So I will not explain to you today, but you have, I think, a lot of uh, resources on YouTube or internet to do that. But be aware that you can do it. Um, you can do the chain of processes on QGIS itself. So how does it look? Uh, when I explain it to my students in France, this is what a chain of processes may look, okay? Uh, when you do it by yourself, you have to differentiate three elements, which are really important. You have the source layer, for example, you have the flood layer, the Paris district layers. It's a source layer because I gave it to you or you downloaded it, okay? After that, you have the manipulation of the treatment in another form, like here. And at the end, you have the result layer. So the one who are created, for example, and which is created, for example, when you do the treatment and things like that. Okay? It's not really complicated like that, but does everybody get it? Okay. Uh, just to be sure, I will ask you to go on internet, on your computer or your phone, it doesn't matter. You just have to take, um, to go on internet and 
why? friends I don't know if you use it in Japan too but so the line is www.wooklab.com and after you have to put the slash and I J F T Q C so I have one people two Are you doing it together? You should have. You must go. Okay, okay. Ah, look And at least one person. Me no, I don't do this stuff. You must go. No, no. Okay, I think it's okay. So you will have a question on your computer right now. I just ask you. You have a title here. I. You want to create a buffer of 100 meters around the flood area, okay? Like we did last week. You have to classify the actions you have on your computer that you see on your computer in the right order. To do that, you put up and down. And when you finished, you just send it. Is it okay? So when you you have here all the information, okay? And here you have like an arrow, if you check on your computer, I don't have it here. And you just have to put up and down, which things you have to put before, in the middle and after. It's like a chain of processes, okay? Which is the source layer? Which is the treatment? What is the result layer? You have to check with what you have on your computer. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yes. so please, when you are sure about the right order, click on submit at the end. And here I can check if everybody sent it or not. You can submit it and you have the answer after, okay, if you are not sure. It's okay? Everybody sent it? Okay. So, I will give you the answer. It was the good combination. Does everybody is okay or not? Like, first, you have the source layer I gave you, the flood area. And you want to do a buffer around the flood area. So after you have the geoprocessing tools, which is the buffer. And after, you have your result, which is buffer 100 flood area shape. 
。みんなわかりましたか。大丈夫ですか。問題がありますか。ない。OK。The next one is so I we can also check most of your answers like there were some people that put flood area and then buffer. Do you understand the difference and the good answer or is it okay? And I think that two people had the right answer. <laughs> so be careful. What I wanted to explain it to you is like first you have the source failure, second you have the process to do, okay? And then you have your result. Okay? Let's try another one which is a little bit more tricky. I'm sorry. So, yep. Here you have the second. You want to only calculate the surface of power outage 100 meters around flood area. Please classify the action in the right order. And here you have seven actions to do. I will let you. Okay. Five minutes. Yep. Yes. Wait, uh, I three and hmm? oh. Waiting for the next class. Uh, Are you I, I send it? Oh, yes. Oh, you can um, link and go back in the in the WU class. Okay. You just have to put the code again. And I think it would be okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's a little bit tricky, but. So one person sent it, okay. So what we have in first, in second. I'm sorry I couldn't put some uh, colors. I wanted to, but I can't.
this in the law. Send it in one minute, oh. sorry. Because <laughs> it's a bit dramatic. So, first, here is your answers. So, do I have some other? It's the most frequent combination. So, we have one who said flood area buffer. So, can someone explain me the problem here? ここは問題があります。誰かが説明できますか ?We have a shapefile layer and then we have directly a shapefile. So we have a source layer and a result layer. Okay? But we need something between. We need. What do we need? The treatment. Okay? So. Ah, yeah. I think it was like when you sent it first. Oh. Yeah, I think it's that. Okay, sorry. So, okay. And, okay, there was also, it was sent two times. I will give you the answer. It will be easier for me. So, here is the answer. You can, ah, together. What was the, you had a problem? You yeah yeah. Let's do it. So first you have your flood area shape, okay? And then you have to do the buffer, 100 meters, which gives you the buffer flood shape. But if you remember last week, when we have a buffer, it will cover the flood area and the outage power area. So to have only the surface of power outage, we have to do a difference with flood area. Okay? With the difference, what we get is the power outage shape pipe. So we have only the area of Benki, Gamai, Tokoro. Okay? And to do, to know the surface, we have to do a treatment, which is the field calculator and where we like calculate area. And then you have your final results. Who, who didn't, who hadn't the, the right, the right uh, order? Okay. Okay. Do you understand what uh, error you have? Yeah? Okay. So it was a little little game, if I can say it like that. Uh, we finished with you with Book up. You can close it. The thing is now, I will ask you to. Yep. To do a chain of process by your own. Okay. You can use a paper. You can draw. You can like draw it. But you have a question here. Okay. It's only theory. We don't use QGIS right now, okay? You want to know how many buildings of two floors or less are totally located in the flood area of District 7 of Paris, okay? This is the big question. To do so, you have two layers. You have 
the second, the seventh district buildings layer. So all the buildings of the district seven, okay. And you have the flood area of Paris. I want you to create by your own something like that, okay. So with those informations here, try to um, create the chain of processes you should have to do to get the answer. And after, I will give you the answer. I will give you the answer. I will give you the answer. I will give you the so you have those layers here, and here you have all the manipulation and selection you can do. So you have to choose which manipulation you do to which layer to get the result, okay? So if you need the question again, or if you need the manipulation, you can ask me. I just put that here, okay, and if you want the manipulation, I will show you the, um, the slide, okay, I give you like, um, I don't know what time it is, maybe 10 minutes maximum, yeah, it's 54, so at 4, I give you the answer, okay, so 10 minutes. And just because it's important, in the layer buildings, if you want the information of the number of floor of the building, you have to check the column with this name, okay? And in France, when you have the R, in Japanese, it's equal to ikkai, okay? So for example, if you want the, f the buildings with one floor in France, here you have to write aru plus ichi. Sankai wa aru plus ni, okay? Well, it's your time. Try to write it and if you have some questions or issues, you can ask me, okay? And here, as you can see, inside the float, you have only the buildings. And there was a problem because I didn't... Here, as you can see, I made a mistake because I haven't uh, saved and export the previous research, so it put me some uh, buildings that are not in the flood. So before that, you have to, not as I did, you have to save your previous selection, okay? Your selection by location. Because here, I made a mistake, <laughs> okay? So you just have to export. Um, the selection before, which is here and within, and uh, not intersection with flood. Here I do that, and you have to export it. So I don't do the manipulation again, but you understood the idea, okay? Do you have any question about that? Or is it okay for you? Okay. Um, just before, I wanted to know, uh, do you want me to talk about Zotero? Who have to do the um, state of art? There you go. It will put your yarn So, 
from Nakoto Shinaka. Who has to do it? You both? Okay. Nobody else? Okay. For the people who have to do that, if you want to stay and I can show you a really helpful tool to your, um, to, how can I say it? Uh, register all the papers you want to write. Uh, you can stay here and I will explain it to you. You are not obligated to stay if you don't want to learn about it. But I think that it would be really useful if you have to write, even for you, longer. It's a really, really useful tool. So, yeah, I will talk about that if you are okay. And if you are not too tired. You can uh, download Zotero, Zotero on internet. It's um, this tool. Here, it's a free uh, research assistant. Okay, it's really really useful because you can create a lot of um, notes, and you can use it to do your bibliography at the end of your uh, long run. I will show you really quick. And just to be sure, uh, who use Google uh, Drive? Who use uh, like Word to write your essay? ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
the document and you have to go to the publisher, you can go there and you have already normally the document. If it wants to work, please. Yeah. So here is the PDF. Okay? It's a PDF you can download. And here is and I, okay, it's I am here like that and I want to save the information for example here so if I put save on Zotero it will register it in my last file so here the essay I created and did it work or not? because it, takes a lot, it can take a lot of time so here it didn't work, so I would use here okay so here as you can see it creates a note okay so, and it did it two times wow. and if you can see it creates something really really useful because when you have to write your bibliography, you know, you have to put all the authors, the year, and things like that. But the thing is, every information has been downloaded by itself. You don't need to write it. You have to check to be sure, and you can modify it, okay? If, for example, I remember that it's not in 2020, but in 2021, here I can erase and write 2021, okay? Well, so here you have your paper, the paper you want to read, and I will just delete this one because I don't care. Yep. So here you have the paper you want to read. Here you have the PDF that you can open directly, okay? So here you are still in Zotero. And for example, I want to, I don't know, I will... Um, put that information which are, for example, really important. I will put it in yellow and things like that. Okay, here. And you can also create some notes to add comments. So here I have the comments, blah, 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 as you wish. Okay, here you are still on your info. Um, document and you create you can create what we call a knot in the knot you can for example here you can say that it's uh, your comments for example so when you are reading it um, you have some idea and you write it there and anything there is also something else which can be really useful and it will pay, it will give you like more time for you. It's that. This tool is really good because you remember I put some things in yellow and I write the comments on the document and the thing is if I click here it will create a note by itself with the date. So for example you have here the citation I put in yellow and after, for example, here you have in yellow also, and you have my comments I wrote on the PDF. So when you are reading, you can put in colors and you can comment. And after really quickly, you can create an annotation for you. And it's really, really good. And it could save a lot of time. Okay? And the thing is, because we have a lot of tools you can use. You have something that are called tags. Tags are important uh, for you to like find out all the documents you have. Because here you have only one, but in my thesis I have like 100 papers, so I am pretty lost really quick. So for example, here is debris flows. So I can write here um, debris flow, okay? And for example, I don't know where it is, it's, uh, there is Lara also, so I can write Lara, like that, okay? And it creates a tag. Those tags are 
here, okay? You are only one document, so it's not really useful, but if I show you for my thesis, and especially for my library, uh, my um, review of art, there is all those tags here. And if I want to show, to see only the document with the nature tag, I have it here, okay? So it can be really useful. And the last thing I want to show, and that's why I ask you about Word, uh, is the thing that you can uh, have on Word an application to link it with Zotero, okay? So for example, I will show you, you are writing something about, for example, the review of art, okay? And you are saying, uh, someone is saying that, okay? And you want to put the citation because you have to do it. Here you have Zotero tools and you can add, edit the bibliography. And if I remember here, you don't see it, I'm sorry. You have here, you can add a citation and here you can add the bibliography. So for example, I, you have to choose the style of uh, your citation because there is a lot of, I will just say, say like that. And for example, um, which is here, it's Touré and Al, okay? If I just write it like that, Touré and Al, I have all the documents from this author and I will put it like that, okay? And I want to add another one, so I can show you that after, for something else. And again, uh, maybe it's this one, or if you can see here, it's the name of the uh, files, so you can find it more easily. So I will put it here, okay, and I finish to write my document. And I want to add the bibliography. Have you ever wrote a London before? Yeah? If you remember, writing the bibliography is shit. It's horrible. It takes time. I hate that. So here you have Zotero tools and you add your bibliography in the alphabetic order. So if you check everything here, like all the information here, if everything is okay and there is no um, uh, error or things like that, or if you like uh, check it, you can add the bibliography that, like that. And it works for hundreds of uh, resources, okay? Here it's only two, but for example, if on my um, So, for example, it's my master degree uh, London here, which was really long. And here it's all my bibliography. Okay? It's really long, it's like three or four pages, I don't remember, maybe more. And everything was done with Zotero. And it saves a lot of time, okay? So, for you, if you want to use it, you are not obligated to, but just to show you really quickly, Zotero is a really good tool to uh, do, um, how can I say, to, okay, to register your, the paper you want to write, because you also have an online website. So if you lose everything on your computer, because it crash on internet, uh, on your um, uh, accounts, you have all the PDF, all your notes, everything. So you don't really lose everything if you have a problem on your computer. You just have to, you know, uh, update, like every week or something like that. But it's really good. And after that, it's, uh, it's a really, um, 
time saving when you have to write and put citation and to put bibliography. So if you have some other questions on Zotero, I can uh, try to answer because I don't know everything. But uh, you have a lot of uh, videos on YouTube too, okay? Uh, if you want to to check to check that more deeper, but uh, to check that deeper. But yeah, I think it's a really good tool for you. So. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have questions? No? Okay. Um, I wanted to thank you for the last weeks we spent together with QGIS and everything. And I hope you learn some things. And if you have some questions, don't hesitate to ask me, okay? And I will put the last two classes on Slack so you can check it again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>